What's up, guys? It's Sean, and welcome to another episode of the E Hung Podcast. And if you're listening to this today, uh, our Prime Minister just declared that uh, most of us are going to be stuck at home during this lockdown again. That suck. But I really hope that everyone is uh, safe at home, uh, trying to be productive. Nothing much we can do to complain, but let's make the best out of it, lo. So today we will read a question from email. This is from Yong. The title is called Frustration. Wow, this one a bit drama one, I think. Hi, Yi Heng. Hope you are doing well. I have listened to your podcast in Mama Sessions and watched many of your property reviews. I regret purchasing my first property, <laughs> even though the property is still in progress because the developer did not tell us many things in the beginning. The primary problem is the density issue in the area and the property is built so close to each other. When I purchased the property, the developer did not mention there will be a Roma wheat project beside the property. Mainly, I think because the developer did not get the APDL and blacklisted for a while. And now I am worried there will be very congested in the future because the total units per acre already broke OUG Park Lane record as below. Park Lane in OUG is around 4,225 units, 4,225 in 30 acres equals to 141 units per acre. So the area that he bought is the Henge plus Kepong Mas plus Mizumi plus Residency Metro Ruma Weep plus Fortune Perdana in 19 acres, total of 6,000. And 18 units. So that results in 313 units per acre. Plus future developments, some more. M Luna plus Kiara Bay, and another 5,000 units perhaps. We already raised our concerns and gathered signatures from the owners to the local council, but no results. Second issue is the missing wall in the actual unit itself. The show unit and sample model shown half wall in yard area, but the actual unit is just a built 100mm curb as a divider. Not to mention also the missing concealed copper pipe and low 2.8 ceiling height for a condo selling at this price. My question is number one, what do you think about the properties of such high density? I planned for my own stay. Number two, what can we do as the owner of the property about the misleading info from the sales gallery and the property agent slash SPA? Number three, will it affect my rental or property value? Because my unit was sold over 400 over 1000 and the new Ruma Whip was only sold for 198000 Sorry for the lengthy email and I am looking forward for more property reviews in 2021. Thanks, Yong. And just when we thought we want to do something positive, right? <laughs> okay, so basically this email from Yong is explaining about his frustration over a purchase of a property in Kepong. So this Mizumi, the Henge area, right, is the one where it's rather infamous because when they hack the wall, there's like styrofoam inside and it took the entire real estate market by storm back then, especially Mizumi, because of the selling price. We will talk about that later. That's something about what he said is Park Lane, right? Park Lane is also one of a kind project back then because of the density. So how we calculate density is number of units per acre. Like I mentioned before, last time we talked about condominiums, right? Why we don't call high arise condominiums anymore because for a building to be categorized as a condominium it needs to be planned in a format where it only has 60 units per acre and the minimum size for development is three acres so in three acres of land maximum you can have 180 units but now if you look into the high-rise projects that we are all buying right now right it's around 180 units per acre 300 over units per acre and it's kind of like normalized already because of the nature of how norm, new consumers buy projects, right? If you were to walk to anybody, like, not like you guys who have listened to the channel for some time, a normal person will only look at the price, number of room, size, location. That's about it. If I would tell you, hey, this one got three bedrooms, uh, 300,000 in Puchong. Hey, okay, ma. But then they buy already. And that seems to be the main driving force for the design development of products of such, where the number of units can be very overwhelming. But a lot of people still buy because it's 300,000 per unit or 400,000 per unit, and it's considered rather cheap. Especially for new projects in Kepong back then, this is like four years ago. Lah. So when we talk about density, what's the benefit that the sales person will actually tell you to close the deal. The weirdest thing is this. Most of us depends on the materials provided by the salesperson to make decisions, right? Never we have thought like the materials prepared are from the person who are trying to sell us the property. <laughs> 
that is quite evident when you walk into the sales gallery, right? Some developers are very honest about what is on site, but some, they just, just build the scale model to impress you. It means, right, if there's a sewerage treatment plant there, there's a pylon there, there's some hideous structure there, right? They will not put into the scale model because most of the time, they somewhat know most of us are lazy to even visit the site. And surely enough, a lot of people buy the property, they, they don't even know where the property is located at. So they'll just show you some CGI rendering, some photos from site, right? somewhat how it looked like, and that's about it. Then it's good enough because, you again, you only look at price, size, and number of rooms. That's about it. And because of that, most of the people are okay with high density until they really see their own house during completion. 4,000 over units right, per building is seriously very, very scary. Then what would be the sales pitch? High number of units means low maintenance fees. That's their sales pitch right? because the number of facilities right, is going to be divided by the number of units. So your maintenance fees will be way lower, lo, number one. Number two, that's why your unit price can be so low because the land cost is actually divided into 4,000 over units. Ma. It's a little bit more affordable in that way. Number three, it will somehow bring up a location because of the sheer number of units. right? The commercial lots surrounding will be very, very prosperous. And those reasons are valid, actually. They are valid. And what I'm trying to say here is that if you are constrained by budget, then you can only afford projects of such, then bo na, right? No other better way, lo, but if you can afford slightly better, as an alternative, you can always consider a different location further away. It's less dense, that is less compact, but you just need to travel a little bit further away from the city. Oh, and one point that the audience mentioned, right? It's the developer did not tell me. This goes to the marketing collaterals part where the developer provides you everything. Ma. Again, it's with the intention to close your sale. They will do almost anything. La, and if you think, about the motivation again for sales agents what do they want they want transactions only ultimately transaction matters the most and how many people actually will go back to the agent that sold them the property when they know that the property they bought is a mistake there's nothing really that you can do to hold a person liable one because it's your choice it's your signature on the spa document that is also partly because the documents that legally binds the purchaser and the developer, right? It's mostly to the unit only. That's about it. Whatever in the SPA, if you were to read through, right? What they give you, unit layout only, ma. site plan and the material specs, that's about it. They don't have the obligation to promise what's next to your house, the view that you will get. And it's quite funny when the salesperson actually promise you like, I guarantee you this one sure make money one. And buyers believe. La. That really just strengthens the principle of this channel, right? Which is to get everybody to choose to be informed before taking that calculated risk, right? Choose to be informed, not like, ayah, chin chai la. This is our 23rd property that we visit really very tired and you don't want to think really chin chai, just buy one. And that's generally the case. So what do I think of high density properties, right? The main difference of successful townships with high density and poorly done ones, right? Will be the infrastructure. If you look into Desa Park City, right, it's getting a little bit dense also. So if you look into the number of high-rise that is coming up, right, it's also quite scary. Then you look into Mong Kiara, it's literally a Hong Kong. But does it work? Yes, because the high density actually applies the population to sustain the commercial activities nearby. But the magic is it needs to be walking distance and safety needs to be done. Infrastructure needs to be designed where it's pedestrian friendly, bicycle friendly, there will be covered walkways, security, patrolling and things like that. That's why Desa Park works as well. That's why new townships are all striving towards that standard. But when you come to a project that is individually managed, right, this developer A, B, and C develop the same location but they don't talk to each other. This results most of the time in a very terrible road condition where like sometimes when A do construction works and it involves the road, right? They will dig up the road, then they will lay their piping, then only developer B come and do and lay piping so they only need to dig the road again. Then when C then, that's why the road conditions, right, will always be very, very bad. 
Ironically, now pothole seems to be the topic of newspaper, so that's very weird. That explains most of my videos. I will take the time to actually walk on the road, to actually walk on the pathways to really experience yourself, right? How friendly it is to travel from one space to another. And the success for Mong Kara seems to be that. Question number two, as the owner, right? What can you do about misleading infos from the sales gallery? Um, I think in the sales gallery, nothing much. Like when you say that there's an area in the yard, in the sales gallery, right, that is built as a wall. But when they get the unit, in the actual unit, right, it's actually just a curb. But in the SPA drawing, it's just two lines. So, <laughs> two lines, um, if you understand how SPAs are drawn, like floor plans are drawn, right, it's actually cut off one meter above the floor level. So, it means whatever that's above one meters, you cannot see the line. And why one meter is because that's the level where you can see the doors and the windows and things like that. And that all reflects in the drawing itself. That's why it's like ceiling plan, right? Sometimes when the developers don't provide the points, you cannot hold them liable unless it's documented in the SPA document. Again, what ties the developer and the purchaser together is only the SPA documents. Whatever that is not mentioned in the SPA drawing, you cannot do anything. Like the facade colors. There's always these very small words, terms and conditions apply, la, artist impressions only. La. Those are the things that is placed onto all these images in the sales gallery. Why? Sometimes during construction, when the budget bursts, due to unforeseen circumstances or foreseen. Uh. Facade seems to be the last treatment of a building. Uh. And let's say now I have my budget is 300 million to complete this building. Now already first budget already. So where do I cut? I cannot cut whatever that is inside the unit. I cannot cut whatever that is bound to local authorities. So the first easy way out is to re-engineer the facade design. Oh. But as your case, right, the difference between a curb and a wall, I'm not sure whether the government will entertain, but as a group, since you have all the compound signatures really, you can just bring to the tribunal uh, to really just try our luck. But what will they do is they will get the developer to compensate back the wall to you. Or if that if that is what you want after you go through all the effort, then I think it's okay. Uh. Then number three, will it affect my rental or property value? Because your unit that is actually open market one, 400,000, room out whip is 198,000. So there's a few perspectives to this question. Uh. So what do you, I think what you mean is the density. Will the density affect your selling price? Yes. If you're looking to park lane, park lane and the property opposite. I don't know what's the name really. Uh, Never mind. But what we found during studies is that the capital appreciation rate in Park Lane seems to be slower in comparison to the property that has lower number of units. If you were to talk about how Ruma Whip is going to affect your capital appreciation, um, Ruma Whip generally you can't really transact for the next 10 years. Hence, I don't think it's an argument. Lah. But I still think that it will affect your rental market. So let's say the Ruma Whip is 160000 yours is 400000 you will need to rent out around 2000 to break even, right? I can only rent out 1,005 to break even, for example. So that gave me a higher negotiation power between me and the tenant in comparison to you. Lah. And I think that's about it. Thank you very much for sharing such an email. I think it's very enlightening, especially for the younger buyers. Lah. Don't get too worked up after seeing like 398,000 next to certain location. That's always a catch. That's why when I do my property reviews, there's always three on three. Why the three bad things? Because no projects are perfect one. And it's a choice for us to choose to be informed. That's the entire lesson for this email. And I think that's all. Thank you very much. For those who still have any questions regarding real estate, do just email me at T-A-N-I-H-E-R-N-G T-A-N-I-H-E-R-N-G at gmail.com or you can just DM me on Instagram I-H-E-R-N-G and I'll see you on the next one. Ciao.